How y'all doing? It's Brandon with Voodoo Forge. Now, I'm not going to be doing any forging again today, but I do want to talk to you about safety in the shop and, and what I do. There have been some things on the, on the social media recently. <clears throat> there have been some pictures and some discussions on some of the um, like beginner pages that some, some folks don't seem to have a clue as to what you need to do this without permanently damaging yourself. Um, first of all, it's just the clothing you wear. When, when you come in the shop, you need to be wearing leather boots. Um, if you want to wear steel-toed boots, that's, that's fine. I don't wear them, but leather boots at the very least. Um, you need to be wearing uh, long pants. I break this rule a lot, but I recommend that you wear long pants something heavy, a heavy work pant like uh, Carhartt or uh, I wear a lot of uh, old military pants, BDUs, uh, things like that. Then you, you know, like I said, natural materials, not flammable stuff. You don't want to wear your Adidas jogging suit out in the shop. That, that's, you're just asking for disaster there. Uh, and you want to have safety glasses on. Anytime you're in the shop, you want to have safety glasses on. Um, it's, it's, I mean, that's just necessary. My, these glasses are safety glasses and my regular glasses. I don't have side shields on them. I should have side shields on them. The reason why I don't is I always wear these. And I do actually mix in society occasionally and I don't want big side shields. Um, but uh, whenever I'm doing anything that would need more, I do wear more. Also keep safety glasses in your shop for guests and visitors. Now if you just have these things, proper footwear, pants, uh, non-flammable clothing or, or resistant clothing and safety glasses, you can do most like 19th century style blacksmith. You know, um, I, uh, you, know you, you can do forging, you can do uh, any of the uh, traditional things. You, I, it's when you get into power tools that things get a little more involved with the safety stuff. Um, anytime you're using an angle grinder or a bench grinder, you need to put on a full face shield. Now it doesn't have to be this style, there's a lot of different kinds of face shields. But it needs to be a full face shield and it needs to go all the way around your face. Right? That combined with your safety glasses will protect your eyes and your face. Um, one of these pictures going around on the internet was this, and it's obviously not real, but it's a, a grinding wheel stuck in a pair of safety glasses, something like this. Well, it's a cutoff wheel, I'm sorry. No, wear a face shield. It should never get to your safety glasses. Um, and there's another one where this, this goober's got a, a knife stuck in a pair of what looks like paintball goggles. And uh, can maybe that happen, but you should have been wearing a face shield. Um, something else when you're grinding, using any kind of loud power tool, ear protection. Uh, you can't always get these on with a face shield. Sometimes you have to kind of cock them to the back. So the, the old disposable earplugs are, are good for that. But you only get one set of ears and one set of eyes. So please take care of them. Um, also, uh, you've got, not only do you have the, the things that can fly into your eye and, and the sound, when you're grinding, when you're using uh, grinding tools, abrasive tools, they, they, what's coming off is not good to breathe in. So, I used to use a, a respirator a lot. Um, use this a lot when sanding wood as well. But it wouldn't do, with this beard, it wouldn't do me any good to wear that because it couldn't get a good seal. So what I do now is I grind in a well ventilated area and I have a fan blowing what I'm grinding away from me. Uh, that's better than nothing, that's not perfect. 
it would probably be best for me to shave this and wear that, but uh, that's probably not going to happen. Um, now gloves. Uh, there are times when you need to wear gloves, and there are times when it is bad to wear gloves. Uh, I like the mechanics gloves. Um, for when I'm handling material, you know, steel comes in great big long pieces, and I use a chop saw to chop it down to size. When I'm doing that, when I'm handling that steel, I do wear mechanics gloves. Um, you know, moving stuff around, stuff like that. When I do not wear gloves is when I'm using a grinder or the drill press or something like that. I don't want my glove to get caught in something moving fast and take my finger off. Um, same thing goes with like floppy um, shirt sleeves. You know, you need everything to be kind of snug fit. I mean, it doesn't have to be hipster tight, man, but it needs to needs to be secure on you. Um, so that that's, you know, but so don't wear gloves when you're grinding. Don't wear gloves when you're working on your drill press. Um, when I'm forging, there are times when I will wear a glove on my left hand. I never wear a glove on my, my right hand. And like I said, when you're grinding, don't wear gloves. You might get some sparks on your little handsy wansies and, and it might sting a little bit, but come on, y'all, it's blacksmith. Um, the, the only time when it's appropriate to, to always wear gloves, I would say, is anytime you are using a torch uh, or you are welding and you need to wear leather gloves. I like the MIG welding gloves. I don't do any stick welding, so I don't have the, well, I do have a pair around here somewhere, but the big heavy welding gloves, I wear the MIG gloves and I wear them where they're loose enough where I can sling that thing off. Because sometimes you, you get a hold of something and it gets hot and the glove gets hot, so you gotta get it off of you. Um, also, when you're using a torch, Protect those eyes. Don't just squint, all right? <laughs> Get something proper to protect your eyes with. Um, oh, something else on these face shields, make sure you get one where you can change the lens out or you, you have a supply and keep an extra one around. Because if it gets so scratched up you can't see through it, you're not gonna wear it. So keep that in mind. Now when you're welding, you get into all kinds of things when you're welding. You, you need to cover up every bit of skin. You don't need to expose any of your skin to that arc. Um, so gloves, long sleeves. Uh, I usually wear a bandana uh, under my helmet. Um, and of course a, a proper welding helmet. Uh, get a good one. Uh, like I said, this protects your eyes. Even using a good auto darkening helmet I still usually close my eyes at the beginning of a weld just to take out any risk of it not darkening quick enough. But like I said, make sure you cover everything up. Now I am guilty. I have come out here and run a quick bead in short sleeves, even shorts. And, and that's, you know, don't do that. I mean, it happens, but it's not good. Don't, don't do that. Um, oh, uh, and uh, like the welding shirts, uh, I wear those uh, usually over leathers. Uh, I do have some leather sleeves I wear if I'm welding over my head. Something else whenever I'm welding over my head is the earplugs, the little disposable earplugs. I put those in once I got a piece of slag in my ear and uh, just in the outside of my ear. But I just, I, I don't ever want to get a piece of that inside of my ear, so I wear earplugs. Now, I could, it was amazing how how quickly I was able to get that out, and it's still not something I want to experience again. Uh, but along the, the same lines of all this, um, th this is your personal protective equipment. You've also got, you know, things that you need in your shop, like a first aid kit. Now, you need to figure out what you need in your first aid kit in your shop. I have a very extensive first aid kit in my home, which is right over there, but in the shop, it's just to handle quick shop stuff. Um, yeah, I've got an EpiPen, one of those multi-million dollar items. Uh, some Benadryl, that's, uh, I have some quirky issues. Um, the ice bags, you, you pop and apply ice cold to something real quick. Um, peroxide, I keep a big bottle of peroxide because if you ever like cut yourself on a grinder or a bandsaw or something, that 
wheel puts a lot of funk in the wound real quick. So as soon as that happens, I flush it with like half a bottle of peroxide. And then I keep neosporin in there and slap that on there real quick um, to try and get the, let the healing begin. But that band-aids, you know, you, you need to decide what you need in your first aid kit. But you need a, a first aid kit right in your shop with some must-have things. Um, so do that. Um, also, you need uh, a fire extinguisher or two or three. Um, and you also, a couple of buckets of sand. I use the, the number 10, 10 cans, like the big cans of green beans, uh, with sand in them. Um, because it's not always worth wasting a fire extinguisher. Fire extinguishers are expensive. But you need to have all that stuff in your shop. Your quench tub also acts as one. And this is any kind of shop. Um, even if you don't forge in there, you don't weld, you don't use a torch, you don't grind in there. Uh, if you just, uh, you, you could have a fire in your shop if you just leave a wadded up rag with boiled linseed oil on it. That could, poof, catch on fire. So keep that in mind. Uh, also just keep your shop clean. Um, if you can't move around in your shop without tripping, that's, that's a health and safety issue. Uh, and, but the, the most important uh, thing you have in your shop to keep you safe and healthy is your head. Use your head. Use your common sense. Don't do dumb things. Don't use cutoff wheels without a face shield. Internet. So, but anyway, I, I, this is, some of this is 100% is fact. Some of this is opinion. Um, in the end, it is, it is up to you to make sure that you are taken care of in your own shop or in any shop you go in. Uh, your, your safety is your responsibility. Be an adult and get the proper personal protective equipment. Um, I hope y'all got something out of this. You know, uh, If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more like it, please subscribe to Voodoo Tennessee on YouTube. Y'all behave yourselves.